welcome back guys to another video this one's gonna be slightly different from oh my god my nose ring will not stop coming out of my fucking nose this one will be slightly different from what i've been doing recently um i've been doing a lot of vlogs i really want my channel to be somewhat diverse in what i'm posting so let me talk slower so uh today we're gonna be doing a story time but before we get into this crazy story like and subscribe you know what to do don't tap that bell whatever people call it is it a bell i don't know double tap so you get my notifications for when i post next lots of new stuff coming up but first let's get into this youtube video Hello, mother oh my god jeffrey move <laughs> this seems a little bit random because you know school's out right now everything's online the reason why i thought about this is because i went on to my online school thing called Moodle. If you don't use Moodle, ignore that name. The online thing where they post all of our work pretty much. I had seen the course pop up for my internship. I just got overwhelmed with flashbacks of how much mistreatment I felt like I was being put through. So we're gonna get into a story time of what happened and I want to really have this be a warning for people. Um, if you feel like you're being used or mistreated by a company, you probably are. Go with your gut. You know, your gut never lies. We like to confuse ourselves and say, oh, you know, it's fine, it's fine, but it's not. If you feel uncomfortable about a situation or you feel like something's off, trust your gut every time. Your gut is usually right. That's the moral of the story. Well, oh, had to check if it was still recording. <laughs> anyway, so I started looking for internships uh, after my sophomore year because my plan was to get an apartment by the school and stay by the school, work all summer long, get two different jobs, you know, just pretty much save up uh, a buttload of money and get an internship so I could start building my resume too. Typically you don't start doing internships until after like your junior, senior year. Oh, this is my other cat, Paxton. I don't know if you can see him, but that's when you typically start doing internships. But you know, I wanted to just get a head start. So I started looking for internships and nothing was, get out of the camera. Nothing was really coming up. Eventually one day we just got this big like mass send email from the Dean of Science in my building. I'm a marine science major. The email said new internship available to all marine science students. No necessary requirements, no experience needed, dive oriented, uh, intern money available to be made, you know, all these things that were they were saying over the email. Literally everybody that I'm friends with in my What's it called uh, in my major we're all flipping out we're like oh my god this is so awesome if you know me i'm big into diving i've been diving since i was like 11 12 years old so it's a big part of my life it's a big part of my future plans for myself that's a whole other video but it was uh honestly seemed like the perfect thing for me so immediately i emailed back and i set up an interview with this guy I'm not gonna say his name but his first name is like george or something i don't know how to pronounce it still he never said his name he never introduced himself by saying his name. I still don't know his name. Anyway, his name is George. We'll say George. I set up an interview because I'm like, you know, there's only limited spots. I want to make sure that I'm going to get this thing, that I'm going to be part of this. So I go ahead and set up an interview. And the first red flag to me was that we weren't meeting anywhere that was an office or anything. I thought it was going to be a little bit more professional, but I was like, you know what? I don't know what to expect. So I went with the flow and he ends up asking to meet me in this Starbucks that's over 45 minutes away from where I live, which was Pretty annoying, but again, I was like, you know what, I want this. I got a show initiative that I want this. So I drive out 40 minutes to meet this guy for an interview. Um, he's pretty nice. He offers to buy me coffee or whatever. I politely decline, and he pretty much just goes on reiterating everything that was already in the email. Didn't really seem like I learned much from the interview, but he pretty much says he's hiring me on the spot. We're not paid, but we're gonna earn commission from the photos that we take underwater. So that was pretty cool to me, another earning potential moment. Well, I'm really excited, and he goes on to say that we have this coming semester to figure out if we like it. So we're gonna be working with kids in the pool, teaching them how, how to dive. They don't actually earn a certification. We're not allowed to say that we give them a certification. It's pretty much just giving them the experience. We go on to talk about how next summer he's gonna be paying us all 20 plus dollars an hour. He's gonna pay for all of our next level certifications. He's gonna pay to take us on a dive trip to Florida. He's gonna introduce us to all these, you know, leading people that are gonna give us all these great connections, this and that. And like, I'm seeing this as like such a blessing. Jeffrey, Jeffrey. I'm seeing this as being like the biggest blessing ever, you know, $20 an hour is more than I've ever personally made at an hourly job. So I'm like really excited. 
I'm telling my whole family, I'm ranting about on social media how I just came across this amazing opportunity. Mind you, this internship has never been run through my college before, so it's something brand new. I'm going to be the first one to get to experience all this. You know, I'm just really stoked. I'm just going off about it in every way I can. So, come time to have our first meeting for what we're actually going to be doing, you know, get acquainted with what to wear, where to meet, all this stuff. And he has it at a time where we're still in class and I can't make it. Half of the people that are hired can't make it. And I thought that was pretty, again, unprofessional because we weren't able to even make the first meeting. So, most of us don't know what, what to wear, where to park, what hotel we're meeting at first, what days we're working. Like, it was just extremely... Uh, unorganized from the beginning but you know I was just continuously going with the flow because I knew this was something new I knew it might not have been perfect so I was willing to work with him it comes down to it and I missed the meeting so I once again schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him so <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit weird he tells me to meet him at a hotel and he ends up meeting me and he says uh, park outside I'm at the tiki bar I'm expecting him to you know to buy me a, a virgin strawberry daiquiri we're gonna talk he's gonna give me a tour you know this and that and the other thing and it ends up being that I come in there and he's the one working behind the tiki bar I can't get a single word in with him for over half an hour because he's too busy serving people alcohol then he finally goes on to talk to me in between people still coming up saying like hey we need a drink we need a drink and I'm just there with him like <laughs> like, sorry, I'm here for my internship, la la Super awkward. Uh, he pretty much reiterates, again, what was in the first email. Like, oh, this is a great opportunity. We're going to be working with kids, la la And I'm just there like, what do I wear? Where do I go? What hotel are we meeting at? And he is pretty much like just con continuously repeating himself. English isn't his first language. I'm pretty understanding about that. My dad is not from this country. But I feel like when it comes down to being professional and it comes down to working with students, you have to have a certain level of, you know, etiquette. You need to be able to get across what you need to get across. And it really just seemed like he wasn't giving me the information I needed. He really wanted me to just go with the flow. I don't like doing that. I like to know what to expect. But pretty much he says, wear whatever. Come at 9 and then, you know, you're going to be at this hotel. I'm like, okay. So put this in perspective, this is really me stretching myself out thin. I have two jobs this time. I have a job that goes from 6 a.m. till 2 p.m. I have a job that goes from 4 p.m. until 12 p.m. or 12 a.m. Ah. My one day off is on Thursdays and then Fridays is when I have this internship. So I'm really laying it all out on the line for this internship. I'm really overworking myself. You know, I'm trying to get the bag or whatever. So I have to get up at 6 a.m., 6.30-ish, to make it to this internship on time. He texts me and tells me to come an hour earlier. I get there and I have still no clue where to go. I get to the first hotel, they say, no, it's not here. I get to the second hotel, again, they say, no, this is the wrong place. So I get to the third hotel, finally, it's the one I'm supposed to be at. I have no idea where to park, so I end up showing up on time anyway, the time that he originally said to come. And at that point, I'm really frustrated because I've driven another 35 40 minutes out to get to this place i still have no idea what i'm doing i get there and it's a girl he's not even there he's there for about five minutes and then he leaves and he says i have to go work the tiki bar the girl says okay unload the truck and to put this into perspective dive gear is extremely heavy you know it's not anything that's for the faint of heart it's at least 30 pounds per tank there's eight tanks in the car it's just me and one other person that didn't come so it's just me and this tiny girl unloading this entire truck gear from the truck. And I'm not one to complain, you know, I lift weights and this and that. But it just seemed like I did not come prepared to do that amount of lifting. You know, I'm in a bathing suit and like a covered shirt and I'm in flip flops. Like if something falls on my feet right now, like I'm done for. I need to go to the hospital. I just broke all my toes. So it seemed like I was not told about how much strenuous activity this was going to be requiring. So I go all day until 4 p.m. We go to one hotel, unload all the gear, get back in the car and fill it back up, <laughs> unload the gear again, break it down again. So it's four times that I'm carrying eight tanks that are 30 pounds each and then all the bags and then all the, you know, life vests and, and whatnot. And by the end of the day, I'm like completely done for. I haven't been able to eat. You don't get any kind of break. You don't get a chance to eat. You don't get a chance to, you know, they don't tell you to bring food, but even if you did, you're by a pool and you're by a bunch of kids, you really want your sandwich getting fucking soaked and soggy. No. 
So you really don't get a chance to eat. You don't get any breaks. It's really tiring. You're pretty much playing lifeguard. I didn't really get a chance to teach. You're just really there watching the dive master teach. It just seemed kind of crappy to put it at the least, but I was still willing to continue it. You know, I went for about three weeks continuously, continuously going. And then all of a sudden the girl that was there stops going and it's there with George which is fine, but we're all just kind of wondering, like, where did that girl go? Why did she quit? And it was just really out of the blue and sudden. And this girl used to be the one to go get the tanks, go get the, all the air and equipment. So she quits and it's just George there and now I have to do all that. And it gets really strange when he sends me to go get the tanks and air one day. He sends me with a credit card or a debit card, whatever it was, and it declines. I end up having to pay for all the things that I was required to get and it really wasn't anything more than about $30 but in the end of the day I should not be required to do that I'm not getting paid you know it was extremely unprofessional and he just took his card back and acted like nothing happened you know it just seemed like he knew that was gonna happen that happened almost every time that he sent me to get the gear and then I started noticing that a lot of the dive shops were kind of jokey and wary about whenever I said I'm George's intern they would be like good luck and like little like snickering things like that and like I thought it was a joke but then George started getting a little bit weird like for example he would give me my chance to teach and you know start to teach the kids and then he would get upset and mad at me you know if I wasn't super eager to jump in there because I just felt like it was super unorganized. I started noticing that a lot of the gear that we're putting on these kids, extremely heavy gear, is way too big for them and these little kids can barely stand in the five foot pool we're in and there was a few occasions where kids almost drowned i would see them with the gear on the tank would be hitting their head they could not stand or breathe and they don't know what to do they're panicking i have to save these kids out of the water he does not check if these kids can swim and the majority of them are can barely stand in the pool that we're in so i'm really like a lifeguard like i need to make sure that these kids are okay this entire time and then there was even a certain time where he was saying he doesn't want to spend a lot of money on air. The air that I was buying, so he doesn't turn the kid's air on until the very last second. He accidentally forgets to turn on one of the kid's air. The kid gets pulled down to the bottom instantly by his gear, and his air was never turned on. The air was never turned on. If I had not been right there holding this kid's hand, if he had not, you know, he was really small he could barely get up by himself if he he grabbed on my hand was shaking me and shaking me and you know some of these kids freak out when they first try diving it is a little bit different of experience but i knew something was wrong and he comes up and he says i can't breathe i can't breathe i can't breathe this kid has asthma on top of it all and you know i'm like it's okay you know if the breathing a little harder sometimes it doesn't work and that's what my response is. And he says, no, I really can't breathe. He's like crying and freaking out. Snot's coming out of his nose. And I realized that George never turned on the air. He told me not to turn it on, so I didn't. And he said he was gonna do it. And he never turned on the air for this little kid. And at that point, I'm like, this is really strange. Especially because all the things that he said he was gonna do, he didn't. I never got certified as a master diver. I never got any new gear from him. Uh, nobody wanted to go on the trips with him diving because everybody said that he had unsafe diving practices so I was pretty much like yeah let me not do that <laughs> so I never ended up getting any of the things that he said he was apparently promising to us I never got any of the commission for the photos that I took on top of it all he sent out this super long message at the end of the season and he was like hey guys it's the end of the season I need to let you know that if you are not going to come don't come like a super long and drawn out message repeating itself over and over just basically saying if you're late don't show up and pretty much just saying over and over that it's the last week of the internship so he kept saying that nobody was coming nobody was showing up and even i had started talking to the people that i was working with and they were saying that they noticed a lot of really weird things about the instructor as well it was just all falling apart all at once and at this time in my life you know like i said before i'm working two jobs i have one day a week off all summer long getting in my bag but at the same time like this is extremely stressful and overwhelming I was also going through like relationship <laughs> relationship issues at the time. You know, it's not an excuse for anything, but like I was just having a really difficult time in my life. And then on top of it all, all of these things that I had planned for the future for myself, from the things that I thought I was gonna gain from this, you know, 
just fell apart all in front of me. I realized that it was all way too good to be true. I was completely taken aback by this entire experience. It just seemed like it was laughable at that point. I just stopped going. You know, I was a little bit disappointed in myself after that for a little bit because I felt like a quitter. I felt like, you know, all this had just fallen through my fingers. Maybe he wasn't lying. Maybe the people were gonna get all these things. George completely dropped off the face of the earth. They don't know where he is. He's not contacting anybody, you know. He, nobody can reach him. All of his checks were bouncing. Uh, a lot of people are looking for him for money and gear that he had had loaned to him and never brought back. So pretty much this guy was a total con artist. Everybody that was in the program did not get a single thing that they were promised. So this entire experience was extremely eye-opening. Moral of the story, if it seems too good to be true, sometimes it is. <laughs> I've definitely learned from it that not everybody that seems to want good for you actually does. You know, if you get a weird vibe, listen to it. Once again, if you get a weird vibe, listen to it because sometimes it really is too good to be true. So that's the end of my internship nightmare. Uh, going forward, it did definitely teach me a good lesson about not letting people, you know, take advantage of me because to have no breaks, not getting paid, out in the sun all day, carrying heavy gear, and then on top of it, everything that I was told was a lie. I should have listened to my gut way sooner. We ended up getting another mass email that said this internship will no longer be offered at Coastal. So I guess they caught on to it. I didn't get a failing grade for the internship, even though I never handed in my final paper. It was pretty much just erased from my record. Yeah, that's the end of the story, guys. Hope you found it interesting. You know, bad things happen for a reason, I guess. It was a good lesson. Like and subscribe for more cringy, crazy, whatever the case may be, story times for me. And yeah, see you next time. That's all I have to say. I hope you... <laughs> Bye.